Welcome back to TEC Tube. Today we're going to be talking about the components inside a typical air conditioner. So this is going to be kind of a show and tell video where we point various components out, we'll take the covers off, and we'll explain what these different components do and what they're used for inside the machine. So let's get started. Here we are at the first unit in the lab. This is a pretty simple unit, so it'll be pretty quick to look at, and then we'll look at a more complex unit in a couple minutes. So on our unit here, it's a pretty small compact unit, uh, which is indicative of low efficiency type of unit, standard efficiency type of unit. We have two sets of pipes coming in here, as well as our conduit. In this case, our conduit is just carrying our thermostat wire. We have our power wiring come from, coming from the back side of the unit. Our refrigerant pipes, we have a, a liquid line, and we have a suction line coming in. And we'll look at those again when we are on the inside of the unit. Let's go ahead and open up the electrical section of this unit here. So coming in, here's our thermostat wire, which is two wires coming back from the thermostat and furnace itself. Those two wires go into our contactor. The contactor's job is to separate the low voltage from the high voltage, right? Because this is 24 volts coming in from our thermostat and furnace control, and we have high voltage running the compressor and condenser fan. So that's that contactor's job. In addition to the contactor, which is wired to the compressor and condenser fan, and we'll look at those in a second, we have a capacitor in here as well. That's because a compressor is a fairly large power draw, so we have a capacitor in there sort of as a battery buffer type thing. Down below here on the refrigeration side, on the piping side, there's service valves. So when you hook your gauges up to these guys, um, you leave them shut obviously until you open up, until you put your gauges on, then you can open those up and shut them off again. This is a pretty basic type of, of valve. We have more complex ones with locks as well. Coming in from the electrical section, we have wiring on here. So some of this power wiring is coming up here to the condenser fan motor. Some of this wiring is coming down over here to the compressor side of the equation. This is a pretty basic compressor. We don't have any fancy controls or sensors or anything like that on this one. We'll talk about that on a more complex unit in a few minutes. So it's pretty basic. It's got three wires coming in. That's it. On the motor side of the equation, we have a fairly simple blade on this one. It's just a two blade basic type setup. Some of the, the other units will have a three blade setup. Uh, it's a little bit more sound effective, a little more airflow, but this is a pretty basic unit. So two blades on this one, fairly small unit. And then we have the motor that actually rotates this shaft to turn these blades. And that's pretty much the basic components we have on the outdoor side of the air conditioning system. The indoor side we'll take a look at next. This is the inside portion of our air conditioning system. We talked about the condensing unit with the compressor and the condenser fan. Here's the indoor side. There's actually two components involved, one of which is our blower motor. And in our case today, that's part of our furnace. We use our furnace's blower motor and our existing duct system to be part of our cooling system. So we're, we already talked about that blower motor in a previous video. Then we have the evaporator coil here sitting above our furnace. So we have an evaporator coil and a condenser coil. The condenser coil is outside, the evaporator is inside, and we blow air across both of them and we flow refrigerant through both of them. All right, so let's take a closer look at that. With the cover off, we can see some of the internal pieces out here. So here's our evaporator coil itself. Traditionally, it's been an A coil because it's in the shape of an A or an upside down V. This one's actually an N coil, a little bit more modern design, up, down, up again, in order to get us a little bit more surface area or sometimes you'll see really, really large, tall coils in order to get more surface area is another way we often do it. Down on the bottom here, we have a condensate pan. So as condensate accumulates on this coil and drains its way down, it'll end up in this pan and then it'll drain itself out through this PVC pipe. You can't see it right here, but we'll pull up a better image for you. Here's our thermal expansion valve, TXV. So that guy meters the amount of refrigerant going into the evaporator coil. And then there's a sensing bulb here to measure the temperature on here in order to control that TXV for us. And as we look further up here on the outside, we happen to have up on top here a uh, dryer in order to keep debris from coming into this particular coil. We're here in a second unit here. This unit, as you can see, has a lot more stuff going on in it. It's a lot more complex than the previous unit we looked at. There's a couple reasons for that. For one, this is a heat pump, whereas the previous unit was an air conditioner only. So a heat pump has a couple extra components for it to be able to run in the heating mode. But there's also a lot of components in here that are here because it's a fully featured unit. It's a high-end type unit. So we have a lot of extra sensors, control mechanisms, safeties, things like that, that we do not have on a really basic unit. So some of the components that we have, our thermostat wire is coming in just like on the previous unit. 
Although in this case, it's going to an ABCD block for communication, as opposed to the traditional thermostat terminals. So it's a communicating type intelligent unit. We have a circuit board in here, which we did not have previously either. Normally we don't have a circuit board, but in order to run all these extra controls and widgets, we have to have somebody doing all that logic. So that's what this guy's job in life is going to be. The circuit board has inputs and outputs wired to it. Inputs are things that we're reading in, outputs are actions that we're taking. So some of the inputs that we'll notice on here, other than the thermostat wiring itself, we have wiring for some various sensors on here. We have an outdoor air temperature sensor, which is this guy right here. So normally the control enclosure would be right here and he'd be dangling outside. We also have an outdoor condensing temperature sensor that's out on the condenser coil. We'll look at that in a minute. Some of the outputs, we have a reversing valve on here and then we have all of the outputs associated with these devices on here that we'll look at right now. We have two contactors in this unit instead of one contactor. That's because this is a two-stage compressor. So this is our low state, or excuse me, this is our high stage, and this is our low stage contactor. So we can engage either one of those. We also have three capacitors instead of one. They have different jobs. So this capacitor is for the fan, this capacitor is for the compressor, and this capacitor is for starting, so it's a start capacitor. Looking inside the condensing unit, we have several components in here. You'll notice we'll have a lot more components than we had in that easier unit we had, because there's more going on here. So we're gonna point some of those components out. Starting with the compressor, you'll notice he's under a sound blanket. That's to keep things quiet for the consumer and for the neighborhood. But that comes off pretty easy. It's just Velcroed on, and you get access to the compressor that way. Some of the other components that you'll notice on here, we have two pressure transducers on here, and those are wired back to our circuit board. There's a low pressure transducer and a high pressure transducer, and they do the opposite. If the pressure gets too high or too low, we'll go into an alarm. That could be caused by charge, lack of airflow, things like that. Those are things you normally wouldn't see on a low end unit, but you'll see on these high end units to protect the unit from beating itself up if it doesn't have the right charge or airflow. There's a couple components in here you'll notice that are specifically for heat pumps. This one right here is a pretty common thing that you'll, that you'll see, in, well, you'll see it in every heat pump. It's a reversing valve. The heat pump changes jobs depending on the season. So right now, this is a condenser coil in the summer. In the winter, this is my evaporator coil. And then my indoor unit changes jobs the other way. So that reversing valve just switches the flow of the refrigerant. We don't flow backwards through the compressor. We just flip where the pipes get connected to. There's also an accumulator down here that we have on the, uh, on the suction line. We have an accumulator, and that's so we don't have a lot of refrigerant flowing back into the compressor when we're in heat pump mode because these pipes are switching their jobs if you recall. We have an extra sensor out here that's on the condenser coil itself. Um, that's wired back to our circuit board. We pointed the other side of that wiring out to you guys earlier. And uh, you'll also notice in here that we have extra mounting brackets and stuff like that for sound reasons. We have a uh, liquid line dryer on here that we didn't have on a low end unit either. That's to keep any debris from possibly entering the compressor. It kind of filters out any debris like that. And then up top here, we have our condenser fan and our condenser motor. As you can see, there's quite a bit of components inside the air conditioner itself. Hopefully that helps you identify what those components look like in the field and understand what they're actually used for. We'll see you at the next video. Thank you.